Hi, I'm Fred Zeglin with another tip from the workbench. What we're going to talk about this time around is um, taps and dies that we use for barrels. So this die, I wanted to show you a couple things about it. The first thing is the slit in the side. Um, a lot of people think that all dies are the same. When you see any, any die that has this slit, it's really a thread chasing die. So it's adjustable, can be used to fix, for, to fix threads that have problems. So that's what this is for. On this side, we have a lead in, so it's ground with a little bit of a lead so that it'll get onto the barrel easier. So always make sure you install it in the die handle so that that'll work to your advantage. They have stops that allow the set screws in the die stock to hold them and keep them from spinning. So you want to make sure you line that up with one of your set screws. Die handles, three set screws. Some dies will have three locations. You really only need one. Um, I will oftentimes tighten them all down just because it helps hold the die snug and keep anything from moving. So we use our lead angle down onto the thread. So we come back, just gently get started. And again, what we're doing here is cleaning up just a minor damage to this thread. So we got to find the, the start. So there you go. You want to be gentle when you do that. Make sure you get aligned in the original thread. Again, we don't want to cut a double thread. So we're just going to go down and, and this is going to remove any imperfections that have been created. Maybe this barrel was dropped on the floor or banged on the edge of the bench and it was just enough to keep it from threading nice and smooth into our receiver. And of course the, the thing is if you have some deflection like that that's pushing the barrel out of alignment then you might have an accuracy issue. So the, the reason a guy would use one of these dies is to very quickly and easily clean up that thread and help the barrel to align quickly with the receiver. The next tool we were going to look at is um, a tap for the receiver. So we're just doing the opposite end of the same job, you might say. So we've got a 98 receiver here. That was a 98 barrel. We just set it up in some way that you can hold it so it's easy to work with. There's nothing special about these taps. They're just bigger than the average tap you're used to seeing. Just put it in a tap handle. And again, we want to be gentle with that start. There we go. And again, you just run it down. See, we had a little resistance. There's a couple chips there that need to be cleaned up. And you'll feel it come to a complete stop when it hits the bottom. There's a C-ring and a Mauser action that clearly stops the tool from going any further. So really easy to know when to stop. If you were doing a Remington or a Savage, those threads run out at the bottom of the receiver. And so they'll stop pretty, pretty readily. It won't take much to tell where you're at the end of the thread. Now these are the kind of tools that are reasonably expensive. They're not terribly cost prohibitive, but if it's something you're going to use in your shop all the time, then by all means go ahead and go get them for the specific guns that you work on the most. If it's a tool that you might use rarely, or maybe you're a hobbyist and you know you're only going to use it once, then there's a very cost effective way to get these tools. You can rent them from us at 4D Reamer Rentals. And that's your workbench tip for the month.